Good day everybody, welcome to today's video. Today's video, we're gonna settle it once and for all. How to install a long crank on a 4L60 transmission. There's a lot of things on the internet that tell you it can't be done. Some people say it can be done. I've seen people machine quarter and spacers. I've heard of people just oblonging the holes on the flex plate, bolting it on, they say it works. Some people say it doesn't work because it ruins the pump because the torque converter is too long. We're gonna figure out what we need to do to make this work with the tools we got. If your crank looks like this, that's how you tell if you got a long crank about how far it sticks out. There we go, pilot bearings out. What you're gonna need is a flex plate off a of 6.0 now a flex plate off a of 6.0 is not going to match up your torque converter. So what you got to do is oblong the holes. That's how your stock holes look. And you got to oblong them down so they'll bolt up to the torque converter. So let's get this put on the engine. Now when you go to install your flex plate, it'll actually say somewhere on it. It'll say engine side. And of course that's the side that's got to go towards the engine. So I'm just going to fit it up loosely right now. I got my bolts right here. We're gonna throw some red Loctite on them. That way we're not gonna have any issues down the road. So what I got right now is the impact in the lowest setting. Cause we're gonna have to torque it down. 74 foot-pounds, I believe it is. I need to stop the engine from spinning so we can torque it. So what I did is stuck an extension in there. So this is where the moment of truth comes in now. We need to take the torque converter we got and fit it up before we even install it on the transmission. Because if there's an issue, we're gonna wreck our damn pump. So what we're gonna have to do is, some people have problems and they have to mill off part of the snout so it can fit. Other people have reported issues that the torque converter runs into the bolts. And other people have said it has worked fine. We're about to find out. So, remember what I talked about earlier? I said the problems we could encounter is might have to machine off the snout, the bolts might hit into the converter. This is where we're at. Snout has to be machined approximately quarter inch that's what has to be done it's either that option our machine quarter inch spacers for around here but then if you do that you need quarter inch spacers for here and then probably long longer dolls so you can get the uh, transmission aligned a little bit better another option is pull the crank out put a short crank in get a dished flywheel make life a hell of a lot easier the other thing is is get a custom torque converter made my situation that I'm in we're gonna try to machine quarter inch off if we wreck it it's not gonna be a good day okay I'm all set up there's no going back now Machine a quarter inch off the top and we fit it. The cap is just about ready to come off. We're gonna have to weld the new one in. Hopefully it doesn't leak. Once we get the machine to depth. When the cap was almost ready to come off, I actually peeled it up with a screwdriver and then shoved a rag in there. I 
I got a quarter inch shaved off. We're going to check fitment. But before you remove that rag, you got to make sure all the metal filings are out because you don't want any of those inside the torque converter. Once the torque converter was seated, I need to know my distance between the shaft to make sure I can weld in a brand new piece. Next part of the project is to create the center piece. So I got a hole saw that's roughly about the size I need. So I'm going to cut it out and see how it fits out. Here's my plug right here. It's a little bit rough. Still needs a little bit of polishing because it doesn't quite fit in there perfectly yet. But a little bit of elbow sweat and we'll make it happen. That is a perfect fit. Now I got to bevel a good edge in there so we can weld her up. Doing the fit one last time, I put a good bevel in there so I can get a good solid weld in there. The fit looks good. Now to get the welder fired up, fill in that hole, tack weld it in place, and set it up, and hopefully she won't leak. The hole in the center has been welded and ground smooth, doing one last fit, and then going to tack it into place. At this point, just going to set it in, get it as close to level as possible. You want to make sure your rags are pulled out, everything from inside is out. And now I'm just going to tack it into place. I was a little blind there and missed it the first shot, but got her tacked down, do the other side, and weld her in solid. So what I did is I welded it and then the two places where I tacked it in place I ground them out and then I welded them back in and now we're going to grind her smooth. And that's how it looks, quarter inch milled off, weld it, smooth, finished. Now let's fit it up. Fit it back up to the flywheel spacing is perfect now. It's looking really good. I just got some bolts in it, fits up fine, doesn't run into the bolts but the torque converter body does touch the flex plate but I'm gonna deal with that towards the end with some small washers so what I'm gonna do is put some oil in it and then I'm gonna let it sit for a few days to make sure that the welds are good and no oil is gonna seep out torque converter takes oil really slow so you gotta be careful that you don't overfill it and make a mess like I almost did I'll be able to know in a few days if it's leaking Right now, I think she's sealed up good. Because if there was an obvious leak seeping through, I would see it. Now we're ready to install the torque converter to the transmission. And this is the most critical part. Because if your torque converter isn't seated properly, isn't at the right depth. Once you go to mate the transmission and engine, you're going to push the torque converter into the pump and damage it. So roughly... With the 4L60, should be about an inch and a quarter space. And I'm gonna show you that. And we're gonna put this on, so basically slide it over the shaft, and you keep on twisting it and turning it. You'll usually hear it click like three times, it's pushed in fully. So now roughly of course depending on the angle if you're looking at it uh, about one and a quarter if you don't have at least one and a quarter you're not pushed in fully I actually just popped that inspection cover out so I can feel it as we're bolting it together
This is going to be the most critical part of the whole job. Between the flex plate and the torque converter, once everything's bolted up, should be about a quarter inch. However, when you are bolting it up, I like to do everything by hand and tighten everything up slowly. That way if something's binding, you don't force it. Because the last thing you want to do if something's wrong is to push the torque converter into the pump and ruin it. So it's very critical that you take your time on this step, fit it up, and make sure you got that spacing. Everything's attached, everything's looking good. I'm gonna torque this down to 37 foot-pounds of torque. I know it's kind of hard to see, but I got roughly probably a quarter inch spacing, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to rotate it so I can come down to the bottom here and fit everything up. To get these washers, which are going to remove the torque converter from touching the flex plate, except for it bolts up and also red Loctite, a little heavy on that, using this gel stuff, but since we had to oblong those holes you don't want to take any chances I bypassed filming putting them in because it's such a, a small space it wouldn't be that good to even kind of see anyway so I'm just gonna start snugging all these up now there you are ladies and gentlemen long crank bolted up to a 4L60 even with the correct space and it can be done there's lots of misinformation on the interwebs but you just watch this video and it is possible so if you have an opportunity to pick up a long crank and you have the tools to do it, it can be done well everybody I want to thank you for watching today's video on how to install a long crank on a 4L60 now, to find a long crank on a 4.8, I would say, is pretty rare because, like I said before, they were from 99, I believe, to 2003 in a pickup with a manual transmission only. However, long cranks in the 6.0 are a lot more common. But for most cases like that, if you have a 6.0, you'd probably want to go with the uh, 4L80 transmission, which is a little bit stronger. Anyways, going off track there. Very simple, if you have the tools, oblong the holes in the flex plate, machine the torque converter snout down 0.25 of an inch, everything will fit up. I use very small, thin washers just to put a small barrier between the torque converter and the flex plate so it's not touching. And then once everything is bolted up, I had roughly a quarter inch spacing, which is good, and everything fit up perfectly. If there's gonna be any issues, I'm gonna document that on a video series. So if you have any questions or comments, post them below. And I want to thank you guys for watching.